Okay, we have it now. <clears throat> Just for the newcomers uh, to Tadwick, a couple of words about Pensoft. What is Pensoft? We are both publishing and uh, technology providing company. Um, the last time in the technology provision mean, uh, means that we uh, also support other journals and publishers with our publishing uh, platform, Arfa. It's a company based in Sofia, Bulgaria with 60 permanent staff, participating uh, several uh, European projects also. We publish uh, more than 35 biodiversity journals. And among uh, the owners of those journals are not just Pensov, but also societies like Zenkenberg in Germany, uh, Meise Botanical Garden, Österreich Academy of Wissenschaften, sorry, uh, sorry, Austrian Austrian uh, Academy of Sciences, and many other societies, especially in the field of natural history. That's about Pensov. Okay. So, what is a nano publication? Nano publication is a simple item of knowledge. It's it's assertion, assertion about something. So each non-publication consists of three main components. The first one is the assertion, which is based on the classical RDF triple, like subject, predicate, and object relationship. But in addition to that assertion, the non-publication has also provenance information where this assertion has been taken from. For example, article DOI, and also publication info. Uh, who has done this assertion and when it was published? Each uh, nano publication is actually a small self enclosed graph. And uh, the most important thing about nano publications is that they are not just human readable, but they are entirely machine actionable and they are entirely based on ontologies controlled voc and controlled vocabularies so they are classical web 2.0 creations so to say so for biodiversity uh, in a collaboration between pensoft and uh, a swiss company uh, named knowledge pixels we created uh, a conceptual model for biodiversity nanopublications. And these two versions or two approaches to the model are based first on the assumptions that we have a relationships between organisms. And in the second part of the model, we have relationships between more abstract entities like taxa. So we can say, that organism A, which is identified by ID, of course, eats organism B. And organism A belongs to taxon concept ID and has a particular taxon name. The same you can say also for the object. When we talk about taxa, then there are no organism IDs there, or they could be added if you have some data about it, but this is more abstract relationship between groups of organisms, which we normally call taxa, which have their taxon names. And you can say, you can infer different relations between these two entities, subject and object, like organism, organism A uh, occurs in environment B and so on. I will show this now, how it works. So since, since uh, some months, we have introduced this workflow, uh, first in the Biodiversity Data Journal. It has a tab in the main page called Nano Publications. When you press on the tab, you see the Nano Publications page with a very simple instruction how you can publish a Nano Publication, and also with list of already published Nano Publications by different people. So if you if you press on create nano publication, the system will redirect you to the nano dash, nano dash infrastructure, which is created by knowledge pixels, where biodiversity data journal or, or any other infrastructure could have its connector page, specially designed for a particular journal or particular research infrastructure. So here, 
it's 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 a bit bit readable, but you have several templates for nano publications like associations between organisms, associations between taxa, association between taxa and environments, uh, associations between taxon names like synonymies, very, very different versions and of templates, which also can be amended with uh, um, new templates depending on the needs of the biodiversity community. If you click on a template, then there is a interface open for you, where uh, if you type, let's say, um, a taxon name, it will suggest taxon name through a drop, drop down menu taken from Checklist Bank. So you can select the taxon name with its ID. Then in the second field, you can select the relation, for example, taken from the relation ontology like parasite ison or or occurs in and on the third field of the subject field you can select the other the other part of the of the nano publications the object which could be uh, another taxon another organism or just uh, environmental habitat listed in the environmental ontology the well-known envo then you can add also text string to explain let's say in free text what you have meant when you published that nanopublication, some more explanatory human readable text. Um, you can do this only if you have ORCID. So the only way to publish a nanopublication is to identify yourself with ORCID ID. There is no other way. And also, when you publish it, it has some metadata like uh, timestamp of publication and who has done that publication. Okay, and once the nano publication is published on NanoDash, NanoDash is a system of distributed servers, more than 11 servers. So nano publication is actually occurs there on that system of servers. It's automatically being taken by our system and visualized just in seconds on the main nano publications page. So this, this there is all the time um, uh, be directional link between the nano publication server and the infrastructure from where a nano publication has been generated, created, and published. Doesn't okay. So there are also more generic templates like universal data linking nano publication format which is also available along the biodiversity nano publications, which says that a resource, resource A is linked to resource B. It is the same as, or it is similar to all that ontology terms of relations. They can be applied for any digital entities on the two sides. You can say here that, for example, um, uh, accession number uh, of gene sequence A has been has been taken or extracted from organism ID B, something like that. I would like especially stress on the very powerful feature of nano publications to be used as universal annotation tool, and actually to work with any infrastructure which has HTML pages, HTML representation of their data or text or whatever, or images. How it works? This is an article uh, in our Rio journal. There are two ways to annotate the content. The first one is to say your general opinion about the article. Uh, there is a link here, not readable really, but uh, uh, add reaction to this article. If you click on that, you see the nano publication template on NanoDash, where you can say automatically the DOI of the article, your name, is everything fulfilled automatically. You don't need to do that. You can only say, I either support or disagree or uh, argue or all, all those categories, sorry. Which are, which are actually uh, available from the cytoontology. Can I turn back? How? 
I try, but can you turn back to please do it? Yeah. More, more, more. Yes. Or one can select a text from the from the article, from the content, then copy selected text, post a comment, and export that comment into a nano publication. And after that, the comment will appear on the article page. For example, the first one says that uh, the promise of open hardware as a transition of open science, is this really the right word choice here? Somebody says about that. This, this is a nano publication, independent nano publication. Why this is good for annotating? It is good because each nano publication is not stored closely in a kind of isolated seal or seals. It is thrown in the wild, in the internet. It is, of course, stored in on servers, but it is absolutely fair. It is findable and accessible from there. So the infrastructure can take back that nano publication automatically and either post it to the users to the owner of the data or simply visualize it on their website. It is really simple and really efficient for annotating. Um, okay, um, an example of human readable form of nano publication is here, like uh, it's a simple one, of course, that uh, Canis Lupus eats or the Colegus Virginianus. Um, you see that they, the species have their ranks, the taxon names and concepts are being taken from Catalog of Life with their IDs, with their identifiers. It also has identifier in the relation ontology. So it's all this is based on identifiers from external trusted and hopefully permanent and persistent resources. But behind this simple statement, it's a lot of computer readable metadata, which says everything about the namespaces, about the ontologies, about identifiers which are used in these publications. The users don't see that, of course, but I just want to show that this exists. So this workflow is currently in development for additional nano publication templates. And we already get suggestions from biodiversity researchers who need particular types of templates. It's also um, we work on automated creation of nano publications from some tables. If the tables contain, let's say, taxon names, succession numbers with their IDs, then it's very easy to create uh, automatically a massive bulk of nano publications. Um, it could be, uh, here is just explained, explained how we could generate nano publications also automatically, which means a translation of, uh, of important assertions which are closed into a table, human readable table, they can be exported into machine readable form. And, and then this is how this semantic publishing system looks like. On the one side, it is the publishers like Pensoft who publishes new information, either through Alpha writing tool or through MS Word files. Then it passes editorial process, copy editing, publication. Then the content is being distributed to different aggregators, just as Donut Agusti has shown us. And on the other side, the same process is being provided by Platzi. They extract legacy data and put the data into the same, the same aggregators, which means that legacy content and newly published content come together into one and the same place. And nano publications are important element of all this. Yeah. So this is from me. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, Donald was the first, I think.
Sorry, Masha. Maybe a Masha, Masha, the lady uh, first. Uh, probably about the same time as soon as you finish <laughs> speaking. So, j j just to clarify, a, a nano public these nano publications are effectively a, each a single assertion, a triple, if you like. Yeah. And if we want to publish multiple things, they're multiple nano publications. You could combine multiple assertions into into one nano publication. For example, you can say this organism ID has that taxon name. That taxon name is is used according to that taxon concept. Right. This is how it's done, actually. So there are multiple okay. assertions. But the main assertion, the main one, is between the object, which is either organism or taxon right. name, and the other thing. So so if, if I wanted, for example, I'd, I've discovered the undescribed male of some wasp. Yeah. But a nano publication where I might want to publish an image and a block of text as a description is not the way to go. I need a micro publication, do I? Well, you you can <laughs> <laughs> actually you are right. You are right. There is a term micro publication which allow a bit more. Right. But you definitely can say very quickly that uh, this name is synonym of that name and this immediately exported and has a link to the content where it is uh, somehow justified. Yeah, uh, Masha? Okay, yeah, so I probably had a similar question. You know, whether the NANA publication can be adopted as a way of uh, new taxa proposals. So your answer is no, because you can't attach evidences. Can attach what? Sorry. Evidence. You can't evidence. attach evidence such you, as phylogenetic trees. You can attach anything to it. Actually, you should, because NANA publications are derived from something. It could be unpublished data, but normally they, they step on something which is published and available online and possible to be checked. And they are open access, yeah? That is... Normally it should yeah. be, but what, what... sometimes could not be. Okay, um, just another quick question. What are the currently, what is the cost of it? I didn't really publish. hear you. What is? What are the current cost for another publication? There is no cost. It's free? They anyone can publish it now well okay. maybe in the future knowledge pixels uh, will decide yes. to do something but definitely it is free for the moment great thank you so you can test it masha <laughs> and last question because we don't have uh, much time left peter um so the nano publications are a way to provide comments on an article um would this be a way to link presentations and recordings to the BIS articles, but it's currently not available yet? Would that be a way to hack it and then the Tedwick website could use those? Uh, actually, we have that function built in into the platform and we actually publish each year the presentations and the video. We attach them after the conferences on bulk for everyone. So. But you anything don't... which you can, let's say, identify, you can select the HTML string, can be annotated. Mm -hmm. It could be also on the GPF website if they use the application module. It could be anywhere. I don't know if we have time for one more. Um, I was going to ask about the novelty aspect of this in terms of scope criteria. So when we think about traditional publications, we have various criteria. Is there a requirement for novelty in a nano publication? Or, or not? No, because, well, normally if you want to publish something, it should be novel somehow, but you can publish something which is well known, but but convert it into machine readable yeah. statement. Yeah. 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 Okay, I think we have to, to move to the next talk on the planetary knowledge base. Thank you.